So what is insurance and why is math needed for insurance? Insurance is basically an agreement between two parties, the insured and the insurer. The insured, also known as the policyholder, makes regular payments to the insurer in return for protection against some sort of loss, usually financial. The regular payments are called premiums, and a request from the insured to the insurer for a compensation of a loss is called a claim. Without insurance, the financial loss suffered by the insured can be catastrophic. And so the role of the actuary is to make sure that premiums are set at a reasonable level. One of the reasons that math is needed is because claims can be unpredictable in both severity and frequency. Some of the later actual exams are going to focus more on what exactly goes into developing these premiums. The focus of exam P is more mathematical than conceptual. Questions on policy adjustments will mainly be focused on random variables and various statistics. So if you're not familiar with random variables, it may be worth going back and reviewing those topics first. On exam P, there are two keywords to look out for, loss and payment. Loss refers to the claim amount before insurance policies kick in. So for example, P, that's before deductibles, coinsurance, and benefit limits are applied. Payment is the amount paid out by the insurer after deductibles, coinsurance, and benefit limits. When working with losses, there are a lot of different types of questions that can be asked. For example, this question asks us to calculate the difference between the median and 20 percentile of a loss. This next one gets into order statistics. Here we see the exponential distribution and the uniform distribution. There are also questions on discrete random variables and conditional probability. So there's a lot of different types of questions that can be asked. In many cases, unless you see the word policy limit or deductible, these questions are just gonna test your knowledge of general probability and random variables. Sometimes you do have to be careful though. For example, this question asks us to calculate the median amount that the insurer pays a policyholder for a loss under the policy. So even though loss is mentioned here, the question is actually asking for the payment. Since this question mentions deductibles, this would be a good time to define what a deductible is. A deductible is a predetermined threshold that the insured must meet before the insurer begins to cover for costs. So in this example, with a deductible of one, the insurer does not start making payments until losses exceed one. So in shorthand, we can express the payment function as the maximum of losses minus the deductible and zero. Sometimes you might also see this written as a piecewise function. These two statements are equivalent. The tricky part with this question is not necessarily the math, but really understanding what the question is asking for. Even though the word loss appears in the question three times, the question is actually asking for the payment. As another example, here's a very similar question that states, an insurance company sells a policy with a deductible of 100. Losses follow an exponential distribution with mean 300. Calculate the 95th percentile of losses that exceed the deductible. So in this question, you are calculating the percentile of losses, but only of those that exceed the deductible of 100. This video is meant to be introductory, so we're not going to go through a step-by-step -step solution of these questions. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the written solutions in the description below. The reason for showing these examples is to demonstrate that there are just so many ways the exam can ask questions on the same concept, and that's why it's widely recommended to just go through a ton of practice questions so that you get experience with all sorts of different questions. So for example, with deductibles, losses could follow continuous distributions, they can follow discrete distributions. The question can ask you for the median as we just saw, or it can ask you for the variance or expected value. One of the best ways to prepare is just to go through a ton of different scenarios so that you get hands-on experience solving these types of questions. The next item on the syllabus listed next to deductibles is coinsurance. Coinsurance is the amount that the insured pays after the deductible is met. For example, if you have a deductible of 500 and coinsurance of 20% and you incur a loss of 800, then as the insured, you would first pay the full deductible of 500. Then after that, you would pay 20% of the excess 300. So the insured's full liability is 500 plus 20% of 300, which totals 560. The remaining 240 of the loss is then covered by the insurer. One of the reasons that deductibles and coinsurance exist is to make sure that the insured has some financial responsibility when filing a claim. Because this also reduces the insurer's financial responsibility, these savings are passed on to the insured via lower premium payments. As far as I could tell, the word coinsurance is not used at all in the SOA sample questions. There are some questions that describe the same structure as coinsurance, and they appear alongside deductibles, which makes sense because coinsurance is applied after deductibles. From a computational perspective, this is really just a multiplier to costs after the deductible is met. So from a problem solving perspective, there's really not too much else to say here. 
A benefit limit, also known as a policy limit, is the maximum amount that an insurer will pay for a claim. Since the benefit limit refers to the payment, not the loss, that means that the benefit limit is applied after the deductible and coinsurance. There are multiple ways to solve questions with benefit limits. One of the common techniques is that if you're summing for discrete random variables or integrating for continuous random variables, the value that your random variable takes on after the benefit limit is just the value of the benefit limit. So in this example here, a supplemental dental insurance plan covers differing amounts depending on how much the loss is. The final tier is a benefit limit of 500. The question asks us to calculate the variance of the supplemental payment. So when calculating a variance, typically we calculate the expected value and the second moment. For continuous random variables, this involves integration. And because this question defines the payment in three different tiers, we have to integrate over three different areas. And so you can see that the final area where the benefit limit is applied, the value for X is a fixed constant, which is the benefit limit of 500. In this video, we define deductibles, coinsurance, and benefit limits. In the few examples that we looked at, the tricky part is setting up the equations so that you answer what the question is asking for. Going through all the relevant practice questions and really understanding the solutions is more than enough to prepare you for the exam. Good luck studying and I'll see you in the next video.